so I just dropped off some friends of mine at the ISS hospital and I'm on my way back to uh, my place it's too early to go to breakfast and so I'm on this road where there's no this is one of those roads with no stripes and no border everybody just picks their own lane <laughs> as you can see and everybody honks at each other <sighs> over there on the back of the local UPS I guess you know they're like the local delivery service and you get stuff overnight in Ecuador from Serbian Traga it is about it is 7.30 in the morning here Beautiful morning. Took a picture of a thunderstorm on the horizon this morning. And because it looked like it was, well, there was lightning. It was, I was seeing lightning. There's Super Maxi. I just passed by Super Maxi. I don't know where I am now. And anyway. motorcycle with no muffler system. Love it when those guys buzz around town. I'm surprised they don't. Uh, oh no, I'm not going to say that. It's like, look at me. Listen to me. I have loud motorcycle. Thump your chest. Boom, boom, boom. As you notice from the video, you can see taxis everywhere. I think there's something like 3,000 taxis in this town. I mean, it's the primary mode of transportation for a lot of people. It's very cheap. That's the corral that just passed by there. A lot of this place, you, when you look at the infrastructure around here, you see a lot of these these places look like they're all run down and old. Well, they are old, that's for sure. This is an old city, but it's also a heavily damaged city from the 2016 earthquake. And I doubt that any of this part will ever be renovated. I just don't see it coming. I just don't see how it can happen. They don't have any money here. So, all most of the new development is off to the west the north and the northwest of the city the part that I'm in right now I guess this is Tarki and there's so much damage left over from the earthquake the sign on the taxi that you see right in front of me is Dale Augustine he's the mayor and that was their campaign posters for the re-election he was he won I think the election was probably I don't know 30 days ago and people still have the signs up but he was like he was the incumbent mayor and pretty cool guy I think I guess I was told I was given an opportunity to interview him at one time, but then I talked to a friend, kind of a, I wouldn't say he was a consultant, but he was, he was a confidant of mine, somebody that I would ask him, you know, how do you do this and do that, and what do you think about this and that and here in Ecuador, and he would tell me if it was a good idea or not, so I told him about the chance to interview this mayor and he said I wouldn't do it and the reason why is because he said it would be great for the mayor to whatever extent it could be great being on Don Shader's YouTube channel but but it may not be so great for me so I didn't interview him. I even had somebody 
that I asked about, you know, going along on the interview. Here we ride on a motorcycle. Here we ride motorcycles on the sidewalk. <laughs> but anyway, I asked somebody about coming along as an interpreter, and he said, no way. He didn't want anything to do with it. So I let it go. I'm not going to interview the mayor. I think Ecuador will be just fine if Don Shader doesn't interview the mayor. So, I make this left turn right here, and then I'm going to make another white. Right right turn down here and this will put me back on the Malacon. I guess that's yeah the Malacon. This taxi driver over here don't run over me. Taxi drivers are probably half the problem with driving here. And the motorcycles are the rest. straight ahead there you see that CPAM building that's those, you see all the destruction around these buildings those are left over from the earthquake it's like why don't they just tear them down you know they don't they don't have the money to tear them down so now we're back on the Malacon there goes the crazy motorcycles They will dodge between cars and they don't make a difference how fast they're going. They will zip around buses and go between cars and they take so many chances. It's unbelievable. I'm surprised we don't have dead motorcyclists laying all over the place. Bodies just laying all around, you know, on the road. You know, well, another day, another ring of, you know, dead motorcyclists. I think most of the fatalities that happen here, traffic accident fatalities that happen here are motorcycle accidents. More so than cars. Support, I'm going by right there. And then of course, here's the circle here. I, just, I call it the pork circle because it's here at the pork. Here is the mall. Say a lago. Back to my neighborhood. selling sunglasses. Good place to get a pair of sunglasses for five bucks. Polarized for six. <laughs> they last about six months and then they break. Built-in obsolescence. And here's the other, I call this the direct TV circle. There you go, motorcyclist. Yeah, you go ahead and buzz right on through there. I hate to say it, but I don't feel sorry for them. You know, if they get killed, I don't feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for their family. The way they behave really makes it difficult for everybody else. Okay, let's go to the mall. Time for breakfast. Those Jim and Jane, they're going to the same place I am. It is right.
raining, I would have stopped and picked them up. They pretty much insist on walking. This is a short trip. I know what you're thinking. Why are you driving to the mall? I could just walk here. You're right, but I'm going somewhere else after this. I'm going to pick up Mike and Toddy. Wow, there's a lot of traffic. Everybody's wanting to go to the circle here. So the deal here for the circle is that whoever's in the circle has basically the right of way, which makes perfect sense if you think about it. And you can't go out there if there's somebody in the circle. And of course, the cars on the inside lane, well, if they're, you want to call it a lane, there's no stripes, but they're supposedly, they're going to do the whole circle and everybody else is going off to the right here. So all I have to do here is just wait for an opening. And then once I'm in the circle, then I have the right of way. It doesn't always work that way. And here we go. So. the line of traffic going into the mall so they have two parking levels here the motorcycle and all of his smoke he's going to go ahead to the right of everybody I guess and cut in line up there yep he's just going to just cut in line just go his way and I'll have to tell the guard here that I'm going to Dallas and Cremoso and I don't know, here's this truck now. He wants to cut in line. So he's just going to cut in line. He's just going to muscle his way in. God, just block the whole traffic, piece of asshole. So on this trip, I'm going to go from the mall to Supermaxi, which is out Avenue to 4, or Avenue to 3, November 4, something like that. Uh, if I can get out of the mall here. Hope I can get out with uh, less trouble than I got in with.
What is what is he doing? That's a good. So the mechanic was working on the gate. He had it, I guess he just had it completely disabled. So there's the driving school car. You see these cars like that right in front of me. That's student driver. Estudiante practicando. I guess that's how you say that. <laughs> practicando. Yeah. Practicing student. So I'm on the Malacan and I'm going east on the Malacan. Malcon right here in front of Monte runs east and west. I don't know, most people don't realize that Monta, when you're here in Monta and on the beach and you're looking out over the ocean, you're looking due north. Due north. Looking right toward Panama City. When I was here, when I first came here, I spent probably the first three weeks thinking that the sun was setting in the wrong place. <laughs> because it was, looked to me like it was setting, you know, to the west. I mean, I didn't, it, it looked to me like it was setting in the wrong place. Because where I was looking, thinking that the sun was gonna go, it's actually not west. There's that car cutting across there. Oh, I think I'm just going to park here. A real challenge driving here you, you just you see I don't know if you can tell from the camera but there's no stripe on the road there's two lanes of traffic depending on where you are there's two lanes of traffic and maybe three but there's no markings on the road to indicate you know where you're supposed to be and so it's like every man for themselves you don't know where you're supposed to be. So the way I manage this is I just kind of go with the flow, try not to be in any kind of hurry, and just hope that I don't get hit by some dumbass on a motorcycle. Because they're they're the real hazard. Number one hazard is the motorcycles, and then number two are the taxi drivers and then the rest is us us expats I guess and you can't come here and tell these people how to drive there's just no way that's going to work I think that the traffic management system that we had in the United States is probably one of the best around made perfect sense to me Okay, so now we have stripes here and this is three lanes there's a problem the best lane to be in and when on the three lane road is in the center because the bus is all stopped in the right lane and the people will stop in the left lane that want to turn left because there's hardly any left turn lanes anywhere so you just stop on the highway and put your turn sitting on maybe don't put your turn sitting on and just hope that Nobody plows into you. I guess that's the way they do it. And all these streets around here are all, I'd say probably 90% of the streets in Montreal are all one way. <clears throat> so, 
and that makes it rather difficult because sometimes you have to go a long ways out of the way just to get to where you're going you know and dealing with one-way traffic several times I've ended up going the wrong way on a road because at first I didn't understand the road signs Una Via is one way or you'll see Double Via Double Via means it's two way Una Via one way and I'm stuck behind this truck My mission on this trip is to get to Super Maxi. Super Maxi is part of the Mega Maxi chain. The Maxi chain, I guess. There's Super Maxi and Mega Maxi. And Mega Maxi is the bigger store. The Super Maxi, which is what I had when I was in Cuenca. See, here's somebody parked halfway in the lane. They don't care. They just, people just don't care. But Mega Maxi, Super Maxi, the bigger store is the Mega Maxi. The Super, Super Maxi is the smaller version of the Mega Maxi, obviously. But I like the Super Maxi better because it's, because it is a smaller store. And But in this particular Super Maxi that I go to, they always have a very ample supply of the wine that I like to buy. And I think they have a better fruit and produce section. So, that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going if I don't pass it up. <laughs> I'm going. Yep, I guess I technically just ran a red light. lane or definitely the lanes you don't want to be in you'll be stopping all the time <clears throat> right here on the left where you see the red signs amber car that's where I bought this car right next to the Toyota dealership across the street from Renault Taxi, he's just gonna let somebody off, so he just stop halfway out in the lane. There is a cop. Stop. So there's El Paseo, there's the shopping, and the thing I like about that place is that store me commissariato. That's another grocery store chain here. 
very big store. It's like a bigger than a. It's like a Walmart superstore or a super center or whatever they call it. Here's this guy. See this truck here? He just pulled. He pulled over to the left, but he's not. <clears throat> you know, half of the, his rear end is out in the lane, and of course everybody has to go around him. It's like they just barely missing me. Okay, no more complaining. I'm not going to complain about any more traffic. I cut off to the Supermax, he is just up the road. Basically what I do is go up this street. There's a left turn lane up here. So now I'm going to go ahead and move over in the left lane. And I'll be cutting over the street over to my left. Here is all one way going back toward the Sea Lago. Stop right, right in the lane here. I get, he's got his flashers on, so I guess it's okay. So here's the turnaround to go back to the other one way. It goes back to the Lago. And right across the way here is Super Maxi. And I have a light. Yeah, I have a red light. So we're going to La Quadra this morning. I'm going there for breakfast at Dulce and Cremoso. This will be taking us down Flavio Reyes, which will be as soon as I make this right turn. And we'll go down to Calle 32, which is Restaurant Row. And we'll end up at La Quadra, and I'll point out a couple things here and there. The reason why I go to La Quadra on um, Monday mornings which is my new routine since, I, since I've got my car is so I can go drop my laundry off. I have a laundry guy that does my laundry for me, Mr. Jeff Lavandelia. He, uh, he charges a dollar to pick up and a dollar to deliver. So it's two bucks a week. That's $104 a year. So I save that by doing it myself. And since I'm already in the area, I don't really feel like it's a waste of money, like gas money. It's a sunny day today, this morning. A rare sunny morning. I captured a, a really good photograph this morning of Cloudscape out over the Pacific. We had a bunch of debris float in last night that came from, some, some people say it came from the river, 
which is up by Bahia. Some say it's remnants of the Yaku that we just experienced recently and it washed all the debris. Somebody said it's debris that got washed out from under bridges that had been trapped by bridges and so forth. And of course, you know, everybody's got a theory. But the beach is covered in debris. And the debris I'm talking about is not like trash. It's wood. It's timber. Bamboo. All kinds of wood stuff. It's quite a mess. So this is Restaurant Row. Right here that we're going by is where the new Grand Bay is being built. It's the signs for it anyway. Going down this road here, there's restaurants on both sides. Easiest place in the world, well, e easiest place in Monta to get gringo, in my opinion. You pay gringo prices for the food in these restaurants, and it's not any better than the stuff you get from the mom and pops down on the beach and all around Monta. But that's just my opinion. My opinion is twenty dollars won't get you a cup of coffee. They got these speed bumps here on this road. It's probably a good thing because people really like to drive fast around here. Right ahead, you see Mykonos, the Wyndham Hotel, Riva de Mar. And this here on the left, you probably don't see it. It's Top Dental, my favorite dentist in the whole world. This is where. Starting right here is where all the weekend party noise is. Cars just line up and down the street here and pop their trunks and pull their speakers out and blast the whole neighborhood. Even people up there on Riva de Mar get to hear it if they're on this side. It's pretty annoying. I don't know that anybody's ever going to do anything about that. It's a fact of life living in Monta. You get all the free entertainment you want. So there's La Quadra. Pull into the parking lot here. Free parking. I think it is. I haven't paid yet. Motorcycles park out here. And there's Dulce and Cremoso. So now I head over to Mr. Jeff Landeria to drop off my laundry. I got a pretty good load for him this week. I hope he's open. Sometimes he's open by this time and sometimes he's not. If he's not open then I just go on and I'd send him a message on WhatsApp and Tell him to, or ask him to come pick it up. He'll come pick it up in the evening. He'll charge me a dollar, but he'll come and get it. It's a small price to pay. The fun part is navigating around on the street <clears throat> where he's located you'll see what I'm talking about <clears throat> right ahead of me here is a one of the few speed traps see the stripes on the road here that's to let you know that there is a speed zone here and they have they have speed cameras speed like speed what do they call them back on I call them speed trap cameras but <clears throat> I know that's not the proper name for them but you know what I mean they'll clock your speed and send you a ticket and a lot of people don't even know they got the ticket it just goes on their record and then when you try to leave the country or go pay for registration on your car and then they get you sometimes I've been told that 
sometimes it's not a bad idea, especially if you drive a vehicle, is to log on to the, I'm not even sure what website it is, I'll have to look that up. There's a website you can log on to and see, it's kind of like DMV back home, and you can see if you got any tickets on your record. So this intersection here is just a one-way stop here. The traffic goes both ways. And sometimes it's a real challenge getting across here. And sometimes people will stop and let you go. Oh, well, it's not too bad today. Let's pull out here in front of this truck. <laughs> They won't mind. And it looks like my laundry is closed. Or no. It's not closed. Good. I can go drop it off. Okay. Nice done. see from the map here this is where I'm located right here on this street and I'm going to go straight ahead and take the shortcut back toward my place and then I'll be home You can see the stoplight right there to the right, right up there. I don't know if you can see my finger or not, but they put the stoplights on these streets in the weirdest places. They're they're on this side of the intersection, and whereas in the states you're used to seeing them on the other side of the intersection. You can pull up to to the stop to the line and. See the, still see that the light's red or green. Here you can't, you gotta stay back away. But what happens is if you pull up to the line at the intersection, then, and the light changes and you don't know this change, don't worry, everybody behind you will remind you. Look at this kid on this motorcycle. He's just going against the traffic. He's just gonna come on over. What an idiot. And he's, and he's on, on his cell phone. <laughs> this kid on his motorcycle is behind me now. He's got a bucket of something hanging off of his handlebar. He's on his cell phone. He's looking at his cell phone. Probably looking at Google Maps or something. And he's driving. Here I am going in a complete circle. I missed my turn. I'll just keep on going. <laughs> this is the uh, the memorial here. It's the Bombardio. Bombardio's the firefighters memorial that I'm circling here. I still think I took the wrong street. Oh well. I did. I took the wrong turn. I hope I can turn left down here somewhere. These circles are so, sometimes they can be so confusing, you don't know where the hell you're going. You see, there's no place to turn around here. And there's the cops over there. Shh, oh, not stop me. Well, maybe there was an accident. Well, I'll just take the long way. Yep, looks like there was an accident. 
I don't want to get stopped by the police. I think I'll just circle around and go back. Actually, I can come down to the circle down here and turn around and come back, but I don't want to go through that police. It looked like it was an accident on the right side and it looked like a checkpoint on the other side. And I don't want to deal with them. I mean, I'm legit. I got everything I need to make me legal here. But I don't want to deal with them. I can't talk to them, you know. Can't speak their language. All I can do is say, Yo no hablo espanol. So, you can see here on the map, this is where I'm at right here. And I'm heading back. I'm actually headed to, so right now, as you can see, I'm on the south side of Monta. And I'm going west. And the speed limit is 60 kilometers per hour, and I'm doing about 70. I'm not real sure. Oh, and here's this guy. He's probably doing 80 kilometers per hour. We'll let him get caught. <laughs> there it says 70. So one of these signs means so the speed is 70 kilometers. And I'm going. I'm going 70. So I'm all right. This car runs pretty good. I'm I'm cruising along here at 70 miles an hour, 75. I'm going uphill. I'm in fifth gear for yeah, no, I'm in fourth gear. Still have another gear to go. That's kind of like overdrive on this car. And let's see here. Period. I have a headache. You don't have your period. You know if I got my period or not. Oh wow, you definitely have it. That's the attitude that dad talks about. Oh shit. 